Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you are doing perfectly well. This is biology, and in this presentation, we want to look at a very interesting subtopic called cell structure and function. It is a very cardinal subtopic that doesn't miss in any biology exam. So please pay attention and follow me step by step so that you understand everything that will be discussed in this video. Let's start. Cell structure and function. Before we can look at the structure of the cell, let's begin by defining what a cell is. A cell is the smallest basic unit of life that is responsible for all life processes. That is the simplest way of defining a cell. Now, in this definition, there are certain things that you need, certain terms that you need to understand so that you don't forget everything that will be talked about. Well, we are saying this is the smallest basic unit of life. What does that mean? You and I, ladies and gentlemen, cannot be called living organisms if we do not have cells or if we have dead cells. We can't be called living organisms. So in short, I'm saying we are called living organisms because of living cells that we have. That is the meaning behind that. Now, these organisms living organisms are in two groups we have living organisms that are made up of different types of cells in their bodies like human beings we have different types of cells and those different types of cells perform different functions we also have living organisms that are made up of only one type of the cell but what do we call them? Well, living organisms that are made up of different types of cells in their bodies are called multicellular organisms. So I'm saying multicellular, multicellular. They are called multicellular organisms. We also have living organisms that are made up of only one single cell, what we call them unicellular. So those are called unicellular organisms. Very good example are what? So for multicellular organisms, I said like human beings, plants, animals, those are multicellular organisms because they are made up of different types of who? cells. For unicellular organisms, we can pick amoeba. Amoeba is a very good example. So, amoeba. Some people say amoeba. That is not correct. It's supposed to be amoeba. So, these living organisms are made up of only one single cell that performs all the different types of uh, functions in their bodies. Okay? Now, in this presentation, we are going to focus on an animal cell and a plant cell. Let's begin by looking at an animal cell. So we are looking at the basic detailed structure of an animal cell. Okay? So with me here is the diagram for an animal cell. An animal cell looks oval, or should I say it is oval in shape, meaning like a circle, and it has got these major parts, okay, it has got these major parts. The parts that are there that you are able to see, we have the nucleus here, we also have the, uh, the cell membrane, which is the ring that you are seeing here, we also have the mitochondria, which is here. We also have the cytoplasm, ribosomes, Golgi bodies. We also have two types of ER, 
we have the first one which is called the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. We also have the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So these are the major parts of an animal cell and the way they look. So they have different functions. Each, they've got different, they perform different functions. And you can see from the structure here, if you're given in an exam, they are all different. But how do you identify them? That if they say, what name is given to this? How would you know? They start looking at them one after the other in terms of their functions. We begin. Let's start with the nucleus. By the way, all the parts that you are seeing here, all the parts of the cell, we call them, they've got a special name that we use in biology, we call them organelle. I'm sure you've heard of this word before, organelle. So when we are talking about parts of the cell, like all these that you're seeing here, we use the term organelle. Okay, so we are talking about, when we say organelle, we're talking about the sub-cellular um, structure of the cell. Okay, so that is the meaning of this word. Now, we start looking at their functions one after the other. Nucleus. What is the function of the nucleus? So this is the nucleus that you are seeing here. It is the largest organelle in the cell. It is the largest. Because of that, it has these functions. The first one, it controls all cell activities that are taking place. It is done by the nucleus. So what have I said? The nucleus controls all cell activities. It is the biggest. So it controls all cell activities in the cell. That's the first thing. The second one is the nucleus carry genetic information or genetic material. What we mean by genetic material? We are talking about deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. So it carries that information that must be passed on from one generation to the other. So it is carried by the nucleus. I hope we are together there. From the nucleus here, we have this ring. We have this ring here, which is called the cell membrane. This cell membrane allows materials that must enter the cell and leave the cell. I've seen that. So it should be able to allow materials that should do enter the cell or leave the cell like this. So it is, it's more or less like the guard eh? should be able to guard what should go inside and what should leave the cell. So it is the cell membrane. Because of that, it has a special name. Cell membrane is referred to as selectively permeable membrane. Selectively permeable mem membrane because of that function of allowing and um, making sure that the substances that are not needed in the cell leaves the cell. From the cell membrane, we have what we call cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm is the fluid. So this, the fluid, where all these are, okay? This is the fluid. So this is the cytoplasm, the fluid we are talking about. All these, where all the organelles that you are seeing here are, they are in the cytoplasm. This cytoplasm is the fluid that is mainly contains water, organic substances and inorganic substances. Its major function of the cytoplasm is to make sure that all cells are taking place. So it is the site or area where cell uh, activities do take place. 
that is the cytoplasm. So all these things you are seeing, that is the cytoplasm. Okay? Now, these three, the nucleus, the cell membrane, and the cytoplasm have one name collectively. They've got a special name collectively. What special name is that? Protoplasm. Okay? So when you hear the word proto, protoplasm, then we are talking about these three. The nucleus, the cell membrane, and the cytoplasm. I hope you are following step by step. From the cytoplasm there, let's move on to the mitochondrion. This one, singular, we say mitochondrion. Have you seen that? But when we are talking about many, meaning the plural form, we say mitochondria. Don't say mitochondria says, no, mitochondria. Here we are talking about a lot of them. What are these? What exactly are we talking about? These are road-shaped structures or structured that are also referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. Powerhouse of the cell. So when you hear the word powerhouse of the cell, we are talking about the mitochondria. The powerhouse of the cell. Why are they called powerhouse instead of these or other? Why are these called powerhouse? They look like sausage. Okay? They look like sausage. So you're seeing them here, seeing them here. Why are they called the powerhouse? It is because this is the site for respiration. The site for what? Respiration. And when we say site for respiration, we are saying there is energy. Okay? There is energy. So, these mitochondria may be many in some cells, but less in other cells. Okay? Like in muscle cells. In muscle cells, there are a lot of mitochondria in muscle cells because in there, there will be a lot of energy that will be needed. Okay? And also, you will find that there are a lot of mitochondria in animal cells compared to plant cells. So we have a lot of mitochondria in animal cells. That is its function, ladies and gentlemen. Site for respiration. From the mitochondria here, let's look at the ribosomes. So these are the ribosomes that you're seeing here. So all these are ribosomes. They are the smallest organelle. They're the smallest organelle, as you can see here. They're, these are the smallest ones. Eh? So we have ribosomes. The ribosomes, their major function is to do what? to make sure that the proteins are produced or are made. So this is where proteins are made. They are made in the ribosomes here. So now, we have ribosomes that are attached to the ER. Okay? We have ribosomes, as you can see here. These are ribosomes. But this ER here doesn't have ribosomes. That is the reason why we say the ER that doesn't have ribosomes are called smooth ER. Then those that have the ribosomes, we call them the rough ones. So you need to observe if given a question in the exam of that nature, of that kind. Those that will have ribosomes, the ER that will have ribosomes, make sure that you name it rough. Okay. So now, what are we talking about when we say ER, endoplasmic reticulum? The first thing that you need to know about ER is that they are attached to their nucleus. ER is attached to their nucleus. So there is a connection here. Have you seen that? There is a connection. Even these that you are seeing here, they are near to the nucleus there. Their major function is for transportation. They are a network membrane that transports substances within the cytoplasm. That is the ER. 
I hope we are following. We have what we call the gorge bodies. The gorge bodies here, collectively, we call them gorge apparatus. Okay, gorge apparatus. Otherwise, uh, one by one, we call them gorge body. Okay, but collectively, we use the word gorge apparatus. What do they do? These are there also for transportation, for making sure that the proteins that have been produced are transported from the site of uh, synthesis to the site of uh, reaction. So they make sure that they transport those. I hope we are together with that. At the end of the uh, their structures here, they have small sacs that contain liquid, and that contain fluid. That is about the gorge apparatus. So basically, these are the major functions and the structures that you need to know, ladies and gentlemen. The gorge bodies are near to the ER and also near to the uh, nucleus here. So I've written them down here so that uh, in a simplified manner so that you are able to copy them and follow them one by one. So the Golgi body, don't get confused here with the Golgi apparatus here. So they carry proteins such as enzymes uh, from the site of synthesis to the site of uh, reaction. So all these are the uh, functions that we've been talking about. Let's now look at a plant cell.